Inflation has been a major issue recently and has caused the prices of many things that we use every day to skyrocket. Everything from food to fuel has seen significant increases. Even though fuel prices have dropped since the beginning of summer, they're still higher than they were a year ago. And it's also affected the prices of many survival-related items as well. But there are still many stockpile items that remain relatively affordable. Some of these items' prices have remained stable for at least a year, while others have increased, but still remain more affordable than other options out there. For the purposes of this video, anything that costs $10 or less or hasn't seen large price increases over the past year is going to be considered affordable. But one big thing to keep in mind is, is that I live in an area with a relatively low cost of living. So some of these items that I talk about may cost a little bit more where you live. And another thing to remember is that prices fluctuate daily, especially online. And as we're going through these, I'm also going to share some ideas with y'all to help you get the most out of the preps that you spend your money on. And the first area that we're going to talk about is fuel. While the cost of some types of fuel have skyrocketed, there's still some kinds that have remained relatively stable. One example of this would be 8-ounce butane canisters for camp stoves. Their price has risen very little and if any, and still cost between $3 and $4 per can. I was even able to find a small butane stove for around $25, which is a very good deal. Sterno is another good option and usually costs around $3 a can. You can use it to heat up canned soups and vegetables and even boil water, although it does take a little time to do that. Another product I was able to find a very good deal on locally was a propane buddy heater. They were on sale for $69, which is significantly lower than what they often sell for online. Just keep in mind that the cost of propane has gone up a lot over the past year. And that's true whether you're talking about the small one-pound bottles, propane refills, or even the 20-pound or more cylinders just by themselves. But if you think you may need a heater this winter, now's a good time to pick one up before everyone else starts thinking about them. And since I have a few different butane and propane appliances, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm just going to use the butane fuel for cooking rather than my propane stove so that I can save my more expensive one-pound propane bottles for things like my buddy heater and then anything that I have in larger cylinders for my generators. So propane is going to be more earmarked for heating needs and then also energy production. If you have oil lamps or hurricane lanterns, you can still find lamp oil for about the same price as last year. You can also pick up fairly long rolls of wick material for around six or seven dollars. I just did that. It's on the way in the mail now. And the price of good oil lanterns, like the Hurricane Lanterns, is still around $30 or $40 depending on the size, and that's usually where that price stays. Of course, you can get cheaper ones, but I think for something like that, it's better to just go ahead and buy the real deal. And any time that you are using things like oil lamps, Hurricane Lanterns, candles, anything like that, you want to make sure that you're stockpiling plenty of batteries for your smoke detectors, carbon monoxide alarms, and then also make sure that you have at least one large fire extinguisher, and then maybe also a couple smaller ones that you can keep in different areas of your home. And if you have a propane lantern, mantles for those are available for around $4. Denatured alcohol has gone up around $2 per can over the past year, but you can still pick up a quart of it for around $8 or $9. It can be used in alcohol burners, which work well for boiling water and also preparing other small meals like soup. One area where price increases have really been felt is food, but there are some ways that you can still get a hold of some relatively low-cost food storage. I've been able to find 20-pound bags of dried rice for under $10 and 20-pound bags of pinto beans for under $15. They may not be as cheap as they once were, but they're still cheaper than most other food storage options. Like if you consider that the cost of a mountain house pouch has gone up a dollar and the amount of food per pouch has gone down by half a serving. You can also pick up many canned goods for around a dollar or two each, and the best deals that I've found have been store brand canned goods. You can still pick those up for around 75 cents depending on the product. Seasonings are also still pretty affordable, and you can pick up a box of aluminum foil for under five dollars, as well as other things like paper plates and bowls. There are also many medicine and hygiene related items that have remained fairly inexpensive. Many over-the-counter medications can still be purchased for just a couple of dollars, especially if you get generic varieties, 
like the generic variety that I get of Zyrtec, I get for 88 cents per box of 14, which is the best deal that I found for that type of medication. Antiseptics are another inexpensive item to pick up. Bottles of hydrogen peroxide cost around a dollar for a quart, and they can be used for disinfecting wounds and surfaces, as well as a mouthwash or to clean out your ears. I'll use hydrogen peroxide anytime I start to feel a little bit of discomfort in my ears so it can deal with any infections early on so it doesn't get any worse, and it's worked pretty well for that. Bandages are another thing that you want to pick up, and you can usually find boxes of those for under $10 along with other personal care related items, things like soap, hand sanitizer, and then other things like toothbrushes and toothpaste. There are also many things that you can use to help keep your home clean for under $10. Disinfecting bleach is a good thing to pick up along with sanitizing wipes, and these are another item that buying the store brand can save you a lot on. And as far as what I've noticed locally where I live, it seems like Walmart does have better prices on those than the dollar store. So if you're trying to figure out where to go shop for those, just kind of keep that in the back of your head. Pesticides are another good item to pick up, and many don't cost a whole lot. Ortho Home Defense is an inexpensive option that seems to work well, but don't bother with the bottles that come with the little sprayer with it. Those are terrible. So if you want to save yourself a massive headache, just go ahead and buy the cheaper refill pack that doesn't come with a sprayer. Then go get yourself one of those little pump garden sprayers, like at the garden section, tractor supply, wherever, and that's going to work a lot better for you. One area that's been a mix of stability and big price hikes has been survival gear. For example, you can get Sawyer Mini filters for around $22, and their tap filter can be had for around $42. And while these have increased by a couple of dollars, it's nothing compared to other products like Berkey filters. Like I think this time last year, I think a pair of black Berkey purification elements was around a hundred bucks. And I think now they're around $175, which is a huge increase. Another area that's seen some products stay about the same while others have dramatically increased is knives. The price of more companions has stayed around $20 fairly consistently, Although other knives like Becker's have gone up quite a bit over the past year or so. Some ferro rods like this one by Bayite are still around $11, which is basically the same as it was last year. I've been able to find boxes of stormproof matches for a little under three locally, although you may have to pay more if you purchase them online. Lighters are still pretty inexpensive, so stocking your bags and kits with emergency fire starters shouldn't cost an arm and a leg. Paracord is another item that's remained stable, and that's over the past several years. I paid around $10 for this paracord this summer, which is the same price that I paid for the same amount seven years ago. You should also still be able to get several excellent prepper and survival books for under $20. I found How to Survive the End of the World as we know it for around $15, and The Prepper's Long-Term Survival Guide for a little over $14. Tools are another item that you can usually find good deals on, especially this time of year. If you have power tools, the holidays are a good time to pick up additional batteries and other accessories since promotions start to become pretty common in the fall through the end of the year. If you don't mind buying secondhand, places like garage sales and flea markets are good places to pick up older high quality tools for not a lot of money. This is actually what I prefer to do for hand tools, especially mechanics tools. Many of these are stronger and work more reliably than what's produced today. Food grade buckets are another item that have stayed pretty much the same price. I've still been able to pick them up for three or four bucks at my local tractor supply, and these have several uses ranging from food storage and water filtration all the way to being used as an emergency toilet. You may also be able to pick up some N95 masks for roughly the same price as before the pandemic, although you may need to look in the automotive aisle for the cheaper ones without the vent. The price of nitrile gloves is still a couple dollars more per box than they were a few years ago, but they've come down quite a bit from where they were. Harbor Freight has boxes of $100 for around $8 as of making this video. Zip ties have also remained pretty affordable, especially if you buy store brands. Those are good additions to keep in kits or in your car or truck, and they can be used to make repairs or for various survival hacks. I did a video over some of the best prepper and survival uses for zip ties, which I'll link to at the end of this video. Heirloom seeds are essential for any prepper wanting a sustainable long-term food source, and many of these haven't experienced price increases. Survival Garden Seeds main kits are the same price as they were when I reviewed them in the spring, and the same goes for rareseeds.com as well. Other gardening essentials like potting mix and mulch have remained mostly the same price throughout the season. You may want to go ahead and pick these up now before they start to get harder to find in the fall and winter months. 
And another thing to consider is that we're reaching the end of summer, so many products are going to go on sale. So now would be a good time to stock up on warm weather clothing and then other things like pool shock, which can be used to make bleach solutions for purifying drinking water and other cleaning tasks as well. Small tarps are another thing that you can pick up for under $10 depending on where you shop. They probably won't be heavy duty, but they'll work well to keep in a bug out bag or in your vehicle. Another item that's still easy to find under $10 is cheap flashlights. These work well to keep in drawers so you can have a light in every room or to keep in other kits as backups to your main EDC light. So if you want to see that zip tie video that I talked about earlier, click up here. And if you want to see a playlist full of items that you should be stockpiling, like I've done videos over household goods, medications, and then just general stockpiling, y'all check out this playlist. So thank y'all for stopping by. Y'all have a good one.